Blog Talk Radio. The problem of the 20th century is the question of the color line between the lighter and darker races of mankind. You have heard so much about him, but in a few minutes you're going to hear from him. issues today affecting the human family from the solution think approach that tackles confusing and complex issues through the hip-hop lens hosted by none other than professor griff the co-founding member of the legendary hip-hop group public enemy this show is real talk that is serious for your mind radio uh, that means that uh, are you um out of your freaking mind Join us here at Serious Minds Radio on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. every week. Or log on to www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash Serious Minds. Or you can call and listen in 347-633-9644. Serious Minds for Serious Minds. Seriously. You are listening to Professor Griff on Serious Minds Radio at www. Blogtalkradio.com forward slash serious minds. The call in number is 347 633 9644. We will be right back. We don't have any things to be ashamed of. These Negroes aren't asking for no nation. We're trying to crawl back on the plantation. A revolution is bloody. Revolution is hostile. Revolution knows no compromise. Somebody pull up. Brother and friend, Brother Professor Griffin, we welcome him 
Brother Griff, are you there? I'll make sure we get him up. So stay tuned, family. Obviously got my brother disconnected. We're going to go to break, come back in, and make sure that we get our brother up so that we have him up with us because we're not going to have the problems that we had before. So in the meantime, in between time, listen to this message, get my brother up, and we're coming right back in with the professor. You're listening to Serious Minds Radio with your host, Professor Griff of Public Enemy. Serious Minds for Serious Times. Seriously. Check one two one two. Check one two one two. And hopefully y'all can hear me. So um, I'm just gonna proceed like y'all can. Somebody give me the thumbs up and we good. But anyway, this is Serious Minds Radio with your host Professor Griff. Um, greetings, family. Um, welcome to another edition of Serious Minds here on a Tuesday. All right, there's so much happening and so much going on in the world. I um, suppose I've been taking this time to complete the book, to get it out to you um, in a very timely manner. Uh, before I put it up for pre-sale, I want to make sure everything is in order so I don't take, you know, six months, eight months to get you the book that I promised you, having to refund money and all this other kind of stuff. Don't want to fall into that, all right? Um, anyway, this is Serious Minds because you all know, dealing with the law of attraction, that Serious Minds attract Serious Minds, and as – uh uh, the sister said, very seriously, all right? We are serious about the minds of the human family. We are keeping our fingers on the pulse of our people here in the wilderness of North America and throughout the black African diaspora. As always, each and every uh, week, I got to thank those and, and shout out those sponsors and those supporters of Serious Minds Radio and, in a minute, Serious Minds TV, all right? Those that donate. Uh, to the broadcast and, and to the efforts um, outside of Blog Talk. We definitely thank you. Um, Deanna Dawn, Kiwa, um, Tasha from Plus Tosh Creations, and of course, Millennium Music Media Group, uh, Full Circle Recruiting, and Like Minds, Like Minds. All right? All right. Um, and I think um, every week I keep mentioning Grown Girls Production. Um, definitely want to thank all those those supporters. And of course, we got to thank you for tuning in every Tuesday and sharing the link and uh, passing the information on so we can meet here every Tuesday. I'm not sure if we're going to meet here every Tuesday, uh, but um, those things that are coming up that's concerning our people, we have to meet here so we can talk, all right, and uh, hammer out these, these kind of issues. Uh, in the meantime, in between time, um, there's a few things that I need to talk about. Um, of course, um, all of us are in this um, morning state because we lost a beautiful sister, Phoenicia Core, which is Tupac's mom. Um, a lot of people just have, are already writing her off like she was just only Tupac's, Tupac's mom. No, she was a serious, serious revolutionary. Not like some of these sisters that you see today. They put up a Facebook post and all of a sudden they're revolutionaries. Um, they, 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 their life is on Facebook and they live for likes and, and people to applaud them. Um, no, Afini Shakur is a real woman, a real sister, and a real revolutionary. Not some of these fake bootlicking, handkerchief head, bootlicking ass sisters that uh, put up a couple of posts and they think just because a few people like it that they're supposed to be doing the work. No, that's not the work. How about the work off a of Facebook page and in the community where it counts? All right? Not this pseudo kind of revolutionary work that these fake imps uh, be doing thinking that they're doing the work. But um, shout out to the rest of the family. Um, shout out to all of the brothers and sisters that Tupac touched. Um, um, and his mom definitely blessed us. And all the struggles that she went through in order to see Tupac through to the point where he touched uh, all of our lives. All right, I want to shout out to all the brothers and sisters in New Orleans. I um, really appreciate you all the community bookstore. Thanks for having me. Um, my man, Ari, uh, Mario Abney and the Abney Effect, the jam session I did, I put it up on um, on the Facebook page, so y'all go check it out. Um, I want to thank, you know, Devin and all those brothers, man, that I rode with my man B. Of course, we call him New. His family call him Nunu, but that shit is just too damn cute for me, Nunu. But anyway, um, shout out to my man New. Um, I got caught in the storm, spent eight hours at the airport, couldn't even get a flight. My man New swung by in the rent-a-car and said, look, let's just drive to Atlanta. I said, let's go. All right. 
All right, so shout out to a few people around the globe that's tuning in, um, that's definitely supporting us um, around the United States. Jessica from um, Nashville, thanks, I really appreciate that. Um, L Boogie from the Shy, all right, me and Black Dot's going to be in the Shy June 12th. Write that date down, y'all. Uh, me and Black Dot in the Shy June 12th, making it happen. All right. Um, but listen, I want to talk about something. It is now 810. I'm looking for my brother uh, to come on the line. We're going to discuss something in a minute, and then we're going to talk about the triple alphabet theory. Tonight's show is going to simply be, you know, Professor Griff dealing with the triple alphabet theory. It was done August 21st, um, 2014. It was a lecture at the House of Consciousness. Shout out to Drea um, in Norfolk, Virginia. Um, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to break down the alphabet. I'm going to break, break down the alphabet boys. I'm going to break down this whole idea of this third dimensional paradigm. All right, so it's going to be a very interesting show. We can't take calls. All right, uh, shout out to um, Najla, who's going to be at the, at the controls because uh, brother got to go entertain some people. Um, hopefully, y'all know what that means. If y'all don't, y'all good. Don't worry about it. Um, but anyway, this situation with Bambada. Let me take this gum out of my mouth because I don't want y'all to misconstrue what I'm about to say. The situation with Van Bottom, when I did the um, – when I did Brother Richard's interview dealing with the Van Bottom situation, and you can go up on YouTube and you can check it out. I did it without having prior knowledge of what I know now. So I spoke with what I knew at that particular point. To the idiotic heifer that called – Irritated genie show, trying to trying to blast me, talking about how could we how could Professor Griff say we we need to put our arms around Bambada uh, at this time and blah 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 blah. She got the information ass backwards. All right, she got it ass backwards. Um, I did that interview with the knowledge I had about the situation concerning Bambada, and I handled it with kid gloves, and I handled it cautiously, and I handled it with compassion. All right. People was expecting me to go on, uh, come on the on, on the interview with Brother Rich, blasting Bambada, going for the juggler vein. Y'all heard exactly what I said, and y'all know me. All right, so to that sister, you need to pump the brakes. I don't know you, and I know you don't know me. But for the last 15 years, I've been putting my phone number out there. All right, how dare you go up on any, uh, Irritated Genie's platform and say what you said in reference to me, uh, talking about putting my our arms around Bambada, and y'all already know that he's guilty. Well, I didn't know that at that point. But today, right now, from what I've heard from victims and what I've heard from people, the fifth victim and the fifth person coming out, and what I know from uh, inside information, of course we can have that discussion. I don't want to have that kind of discussion, though, on Brother Rich's platform. I'd rather have it, have it on my own so y'all don't blame Brother Rich for anything that Professor Griff is going to say, all right? And I think this is this is very, very uh, real. Hold on one second, brothers and sisters. Hold on for a second. Mr. Server. Peace, brother. Can you hear me? Peace. Yeah, I hear you loud and clear. I was just in the middle of saying what I have to say. Can you give me a minute? Yes, sir. Yes, all sir. Right. No, you're, you're, you're on live. We hear you, but um, I, I just want to say this, and you can chime in. I'm saying to y'all, brothers and sisters, at this point right now, I am thoroughly convinced that Africa Bambada is guilty as charged by not only the five people that came, came out. I'm talking about the people that have called me directly and some of the people I've been in contact with. You understand what I'm saying? Everyone that know me and that's around me, and it's only a few people, know that this has been weighing heavy on my heart. I don't get pleasure coming to take this kind of position on this situation with Africa Bambada. But I give less than a rat's ass who the fuck Africa Bambada is and what the fuck uh, hip hop is. If you touching little boys, you'll know how Professor Griff get down. Right. All right? And I'm going to say this with, with, with Minister Server on the phone. That just to let y'all know who Minister Server is, this is the brother that works hand in hand with KRS One. When y'all hear me talk about higher infinite power healing our people, Minister Server was the one that gave that to me. You understand what I'm saying? And I let everybody know that. And that's, right. and, that's, and, and that's real. Minister Server, myself, and Paradise Gray from X-Clan have been in constant contact with one another. 
And one of the victims called me, like I told you all a couple of weeks ago. And we've been in constant contact with people that this has actually happened to, most of which uh, y'all not going to know the real story. All right, so right. let me say this and cut to the chase, and then I want to uh, dialogue with you, sir. Okay. I'm saying to you, bro, at this particular point, I have my own way of handling this and dealing with this, but I'm going to wait for the call from Paradise and a few other yourself and a few other people to get the word on what should happen in reference to this situation, all right? And then all I'm right. going to do what I do best. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm going to tell you and I'm going to tell the people. He's already guilty, but we're going to allow him to come before the people so y'all can hear it directly from him, not from Professor Grip, not from a third party. You understand what I'm saying? If me and Serva truly understand that hip-hop is high infinite power healing our people, and this brother needs healing, right? right Should we, right. Serva, give him the breathing room to heal? Because I'm going to tell you straight up with what I'd want to do. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not going to put it out there. <laughs> right. But we got to entertain yeah. some people for real, man. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm going to be oh, honest yeah. with you. My spirit is telling me, I'm going to give his ass 72 hours, man. Yeah. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? And then I'm just going for broke. I mean, and you know, what's, what's really, you know, as you said, those of us that have been dealing with this, you know, kind of behind the scenes and, you know, hoping, you know, for a better outcome in this have, you know, now, you know, been shown that these allegations, if not other allegations, have, are, you know, have, have merit behind them. So we have to be willing to, to deal with this straight up. I mean, because, again, you know, while something that I agree with what Ben Bader said, it is bigger than him. So if we make sure that we are holding him accountable the same way that we hold ourselves accountable, then, you know, he, he has to deal with it directly. As you said, it can't be a third party. You see what I'm saying? It, it has to be him directly because these charges are serious charges. And, you know, if you have other people that are kind of pulling the weight behind it and have been covering up, you know, this, you know, this, this shit is way bigger than that. And, it's, you know, all lies die when the truth is told. No, exactly. So these people, we're not going to mention no names, sir, for please, right, all right? Right, right. These people that are in position to speak up and speak to our people – to help in the healing process of the people, if they don't speak up, and they should speak up, then you're just as guilty. You understand what I'm saying? Sure, sure. You're I mean, just because, as guilty. I mean, because this this is a time now. I mean, this is a serious situation in the hip hop community internationally, and for any of us that have been called to leadership or call yourself leader, whatever the case is, now is the time for true leadership. Now is the time for a higher infinite power of healing our people and on many different levels in many different ways, which, which even goes down to why, why have we allowed the, the mainstream airwaves to pollute our children's mind on a 24-7, 365 basis? Maybe this is all a part of all that, you know what I'm saying? So we have to be willing to step up and, um, it's not going to be pretty, and some, some things are going to happen publicly, but there's going to be plenty more things that happen privately because leadership, particularly now, with everything does not need to be played out on social media. Everything does not need to see how many likes you get, how many views you get. We're talking about real life. Griff, you, you and I were talking earlier. You know, as I tell people, um, I'm a father and grandfather. You know, I don't run around the country, around the world, playing hip-hop. I truly believe in my heart of hearts that hip-hop is a life strategy, a high infinite power healing our people, and we use these different elements to make ourselves better and make our communities better and therefore making our generations behind us better. And so we have to deal with the bullshit in us to get better. Right. Now, listen, I, we also talked about, just, just to let the people know, we also talked about I could probably – I wouldn't like it, but I could probably handle um, uh, Africa Bambada if he just came out and said, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm gay. Shit, because a lot of people have confessed to me, and I left their ass alone. You well, know you know, saying? again, but this well, is I mean, deeper than him just being gay. way deeper than that, man. Way deeper because you know, again, you know, whatever, whatever views that we personally have about a person's sexual orientation, if you are a con consenting adult. That's really nobody's personal business, period, the end of story. But nowhere is harming children acceptable, whether it's a girl or a boy. But if you're talking about some boys over a period of X amount of decades, this, yo, man, this is something that, again, we cannot be afraid to deal with this directly, which is why 
uh, Bambada and those around them need to deal with this directly. If they, if they, even if they have any evidence that is government back or some conspiracy, they're trying to destroy whatever they have to their own defense. Now is the time to make that public because these charges are not going away. And you know, and I know behind the scenes that there's some other things happening as well. So, right, you know, right, those right. of us that, again, you know, for me, you know, hip-hop is life strategies that was given to us by the creator. You know what I'm saying? Nothing new about what we're doing. Nothing new about breaking and seeing the CAGA. Nothing new about that. But what the creator knew in his infinite wisdom was that we need a strategy to save our lives because the same enemies that have been trying to kill us for centuries are still killing us. Exactly. I want to say trying to kill us and still killing us. And now we're aiding and abetting them and killing us, and we've got to stop the bullshit. Right. And I, and I need to say this publicly, and I hope you all making a mental note. Listen, this is not a Professor Griff rant. I'm not over here emotional, kicking stuff and throwing stuff. I'm going to tell y'all straight up. Something has to be done to let him and everybody else know from this day forward that you put your hands on little boys. You understand what I'm saying? And then the little All boys little girls. Up now. <laughs> All little girls, right? Thank you. And the little boys and little girls grow up, and they're crying out now, and y'all won't even believe them. Yeah. Yeah. When, 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 you know, allegedly there are people around that know it's the truth. That's the fucked up part. It's not like one person come out and everybody around said, no, nah. there's there other people that don't have anything to do with it. Said, well, this is old news. And, 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 and Griff, I said off the air, I'm just, you know, really hurt because, again, I come into it giving people the benefit of the doubt that they truly believe like I believe. Like, while, while we have different ways of expressing it, we know that hip hop is the higher infinite power healing our people. Hip hop is an energy, a gift, and we can make whatever we choose to make it, but it's supposed to help us do better. So if that if if now people that are espousing that and, and even with the leadership that are not coming out publicly for whatever reason, you know, this is the time that forget the entertainment industry, but forget how much money, whatever, now is the time for us to, to get some direction. We just added uh, the the tenth element, health and wellness. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and mental health and mental wellness are a real part of it. Our, our, our communities, particularly the black communities in the United States of America, particularly, we need to address some different issues that the church is not going to deal with, the mosque is not going to deal with, the synagogue is not going to deal with, the temple is not going to deal with, but the streets know what's happening. And that's the power that hip-hop has right. worldwide. Right. And we right. are still with the with the people that are still trying to find a way to come up, which is why our enemy uses it in the mainstream by putting things out there, trying to make you chase out of things, you know, have made the music so terrible that even people that like it say that all they really like is the beat. They don't like rap. Well, rap is rhythm and poetry, but the poetry sucks. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Right, the people right. that, they're not checking for that. They're just checking for the rhythms and the beats. So our enemy even knows how to manipulate those, which is a whole nother lecture. Let me not get started. I, I feel right. a sermon coming on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, brother. I think we need to let the people know that those people that are in position to speak up to help us heal, that are not speaking up, we got to speak to them. I signed a sure. document for the, sure. for the tenth element. I signed another document to... To say that that, that that higher echelon in the Zulu nation need to step down, let them young brothers and sisters step up and do what needs to be done. And I'm going to say this, and this is what I said to you earlier. If you can't come to my lecture, and I'm going to add, and if you can't come to my aid, then yeah. don't come to my goddamn funeral. If you can't come <laughs> to my lecture and come to my aid, then don't come to my funeral. I don't want to sure see your ass. I'll get the fuck up out of the casket and choke your bitch ass. <laughs> Plain and simple. Sure. Hey, yo, this is a serious matter. Hey, um, you know, if I can just very uh, uh, briefly, can I say something about Zulu Nation? Yes, sir. Um, you know, one thing that we 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 cannot confuse movements with personalities. We cannot, you know, still get caught up in personalities and not understand the message behind the messenger. Because all of us are human. All of us are flawed, not maybe to the level of, of some people, but not who is without sin cast the first stone. And that's real. 
You know what I'm saying? And yet the reality is that all of us are striving to be better. And man sharp is man. So if any of our brothers and sisters have fallen, then we will be there to assist them, not to cover the shit up and, and help them with the bullshit. No, those days are over. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we're just not having that. But on the same end, you know, let's not discount the the works of the Zulu nation internationally as well as in the state and the great work that they're doing. Let's not let our enemy try to confuse us and make, you know, uh, uh, one person's challenges or one group of people's challenges the whole. Because it's the same thing that when a black person does something, they try to make the entire black community feel it. And, and that's not the reality of it. We have to be able to separate those. And, and for those within our community that are not in order, then it's for us to, to use whatever means we need to to help get them back into alignment while still dealing with the things that our organizations bring. You know what I'm saying? So, so you know, we, we have to be more principle-minded and not personality-minded particularly when it comes to Zulu Nation. I would hate to see the great work of Zulu Nation be tarnished in any way because any challenges that Africa Bambada is obviously dealing with, you know? And so we have right. to be careful on that and, 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 and move, you know, like one thing that social media has allowed people to do is just get on and just say whatever, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and you know, start trying to, you know, yeah, one sister on, on, the, on another show that was, you know, saying disrespectful things about Scott LaRock. This man has been dead for almost... 30 years, and you can say, I mean, even if you know whatever you think you might know, it's like we have to have some level of healing right now. You know, as I said to you, right. if, if there was ever a need for a higher, infinite power healing our people, we need it right now, Griff. Right, exactly, exactly. We need it in we a big it. way, right. and, and, and we need to, and, and that's not based on anybody's celebrity or anybody's economic status. It's based on saving our children and our children's children. This is not a play play right. thing. This is for real. This is this is the war that our ancestors so validly and diligently and consciously fought that that thirty five and older generation seems to have forgotten about. Right, right. We right. are the ones, Griff, right. it's us. It's us. Right. Those that are between thirty five and fifty five particularly, give or take a few years. But it's us, yo. We gotta we gotta start holding each other accountable and say, nah, Server, that shit wasn't right. Grip that wasn't right. And, and and not be mad, not say a person's trying to hate, but we try to make each other better. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and right, as long right, as it's right. done, long as it's done with a level of love and respect, no one should have a problem with it. Right, because you know what that's, what happened, that's what happened between you and I. Exactly. Exactly. Speaking, exactly. Right. And, I, and I think the way it was handled, that happened but see, between but me. See, no. But see, but see, people don't know, uh, you know, about you and I. They just know that we brought you now, but they don't know the beginning uh, 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they don't know that. I'm messing with uh, Kalaji about, you know, you know, for those that that, that, that don't know, I be like, yo, you and Grim. I, I remember our initial meeting with both of y'all, you know what I'm saying? And now, you know, what's beautiful is that all three of us are brushing now, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Moving right. forward, you know, doing all that we can to move our people forward. It's always about black liberation, bro. It's right. always going to be about black liberation. Right, exactly. And I think just, just to let the people know what we're alluding to is the fact that me and Server clashed. Like almost to blows, you understand what I'm saying? Over, the, <laughs> over, over concepts, we both had good intentions, but we was just kind of going about it in our own way. And right. was because we was passionate about it, we was clashing. And rather right. than do that in the public, and rather than keep the friction going, uh, I could admit that I had to go study some things and then reapproach it, and then in the public say where I heard and what I studied and what I did, and now we bridge her. You understand? That's how you do it. I didn't put it on yeah. Facebook. I didn't go to YouTube. Exactly. You exactly. What I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. And you know what? And you know what? That's, a, that's, a, that's an excellent point. Because, again, you know, it's like when we deal with each other as man to man, again, spirit recognizes itself, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yes. In, in, yes. In, in, in any form that it comes, spirit recognizes itself. You know what I'm saying? So if you are in tune with yourself, then you know different brothers and sisters. Well, I mean, you know, knowing that their history and their background or whatever, whatever. Now, if you're not in tune and you're being distracted by the distractions that our open enemy has put in front of you, 
then you're going to continue to be distracted and people that are, are looking to simply help you be who you are, which is an expression of the Most High God. That's who you really and truly are. You've been given power and dominion. Whatever religion, whether that's your, your personal stuff, but go to your book and read from the creator's perspective who you really are and tell me, are you acting like that on earth? More than likely, probably not. You know what I'm saying? So mm. it's like we have to we have to come to grips with, you know, our our own path and our own connection to who, who whomever we call the creator. Whomever we believe our ancestors. And speaking of ancestors, let's give blessings to Mama Fini. You know what I'm saying? What about yes. ancestors now? And the Shakur family, you know, for those of us that have ever been around Mama Fini, you know that, that light and, and that energy and again black liberation, the passion. You know, we, we cannot forget who we are. Let's not get caught up in this American concept and, and, and nonsense that it is. Let's not forget who we are. Not, not saying that we got to, you know, you know, be on some other stuff, but we have to remember that we are not where we are by ourselves. So give thanks to Mama Feeney and all the work she did. I tell people she was much more than Tupac's mama. You know what I'm saying? So right. we give thanks, you know, for that, you know. But we have to be, you know, hold hold ourselves accountable to our creator, to our ancestor. That's who we're accountable to. You know what I'm saying? While we are, right, all, right, all, right. all of us, all of us are still a work in progress trying to work it out. But our ancestors right. and our creator are constantly, you know, guiding us and nudging us. If we slow down, get rid of some of these distractions, and as the ancient way said, listen to that still, small voice within you. Right. right, we got to shout out. I got to shout out Lord Jamal. I had a conversation. Lord with Jamal, him. no doubt, no doubt. I had a conversation with a few of the other gods, um, in, in hip hop. They don't want me to mention their names because we're gonna be in True private, day. and we're gonna come up with some strategy. You understand what I'm saying? Shout out to Paradise no. Grace. I want to no I want to talk to Jay from X Clan and a few other people. I'm trying mm-hmm. to reach Chuck D and a few other people. Mm-hmm. At any time, right now, we need to be coming together to handle this situation. But I really appreciate you coming on. Um, and Amen. Sherry, I, wa- I wanted to do this a couple of weeks ago. You know that, but right. it was too right. premature. <laughs> right, it was too right. premature. We had to wait. You know I mean? And you know what? That was why did you? I'm glad we did wait. I'm truly glad we waited. Yeah. Right, and simply because that, at that time it was one or two people that came out. Now it's five. Hey, hey, hey listen, man. Once I once once I saw Lord Sharif. Yeah, that was it for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, yeah, Lord yeah. Sharif is Lord Sharif, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like, I, I know, uh, bro, you know, know. You know, that's a brother that would, would it is, that, there's no way anybody could, would convince me that he would get on and say those things if those things were not true. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and mind you, this is somebody from the inner, inner, inner circle of Africa Bambada. Right, right, right. So, and so I, you know, and I, and I mean, I think, you know. You know, as hard as it is, you know, as as hard as it still is for us to deal with it, you know, you know, it's been shown that you know, Africa Bambada has a problem, and now it's for those of us around him that love him that they listen. We have to deal with this problem directly, and we have to get you the help that you need, and we have to also get the healing for the victims. And you know, I just don't like the way that you know this sensational thing is, is, is calling out. So, you know, if you listen to the, this, this other guy's show, you have people that, you know, may not know anything, and now everybody's looking for the little 15 minutes of fame. And, you know, but, you know I, I yeah. guess the, the whole snowball effect that this thing could have, which is why, again, right now is the time for true hip-hop leadership to step up. So we can, while we are supporting uh, um, a, a band of what is going through the victims, we're also still moving hip hop culture forward because that's what it's really about. You know, right. the forward motion of this international culture, which you know, the, 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 the whole irony of it is that next week, the 15th begins Hip Hop Appreciation Week, and the theme this year is legacy. Right, okay, cool. Legacy. Cool. So, you know, right. it's, it's just really interesting the way that the most high and all this is, is, is unfolding, and we're talking about legacy. Right, but you because, know something, because, because, we, because, we, have to, we have to admit that we, I, I don't necessarily like the way Star broke this. Nah, but no, if, no. He, if, he did, if he didn't do it, who was going to step up and do it, man? Come on. Hey, man, everybody has a place, man. I see, you know, again, the, you know, our creator is the best knower, and, and things unfold. Uh, we play a part in that unfolding, and and you know, Star is eating this up because he's getting his long thing right right about now. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right, he's right, just eating right. it up, you know. And, you know, constantly asking for donations and all that. So you know, and, you know, and, and see, that's the thing again that we have to 
you know, not try to vilify a star and all that. We have to deal with it directly. You know what I'm saying? And and right. let the media do what the media does. Again, I'm not mad at Star. You know, for those of us back in the day to know Star Buckwild, that's what he does. That ain't nothing like, oh my God, why is this guy saying this stuff? You know what I'm saying? And just like, you know, right. I was talking with, you know, dealing with the situation with my brother KRS. You know, I mean, people are piling on with both feet now. It's like, you know, this thing, you know, but, you know, as as my statement said earlier, any of us that have been chosen to leadership and put ourselves up there, we have to be clear that, first of all, the people that you think that you leave, they may be the very ones that turn on you quickly. Go back to your ancient wisdom and study. You right, know, right, from the, right. From the, from the, you know, loving the son of man coming in to five days later, crucify him, okay? Let's keep right, that real. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, right. you know. Right. All right. I really appreciate you, man. I got to get to this triple alphabet theory. And, um, yes, sir, man. Thing, appreciate you, too, Griff. Oh, give thing, as, as this thing develops, if we need to come back on and do a special show or whatever, let's just make it happen, man, plain and simple. I don't want yes, y'all sir, to get man. placards and free Professor Griff signs and all that <laughs> shit. Let me tell you something, man. They better handle that situation. I'm waiting on the, I'm waiting on the phone call, for real. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure yeah. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm waiting on that phone call as well, man. So let's definitely get up. For, for those that want to contact me, you can definitely hit me up. Ministerserve at gmail dot com or Facebook and the whole nine. Uh, again, um, this is this is really about our uh, children and moving forward and, and what we believe hip hop culture to be. And let the other enemies do whatever they do, but we can't sweep this under the rug. We have to move forward right. the way men and women move forward and moving the culture forward. So big exactly. up to you, good for the work that you've been doing. Continue to work, brother. Holler at me. You love us a phone call away, brother. All right. All right. Peace. Peace. That was Minister Serva, who worked with KRS One um, for years and years and years. One of the brothers that established that Temple of Hip Hop. Uh, Minister Serva. All right, um, we're gonna play this song, Dear Mama, from Tupac, and we are going to uh, we're gonna send this out to the to the to the people, to the uh, core family, and um, just we're gonna send them some positive energy. All right, um, Feeney was handling Tupac's catalog, and y'all y'all heard me talk recently on Brother Richard's show. And on this one about who's going to handle Prince's catalog, who's handling uh, Michael Jackson, who's, gonna, who's handling James Brown, who's handling all that information that came that's in uh, Don Cornelius' vault. You understand what I'm saying? And this is very real. Who's going to handle Dr. Francis Cress Welsing's um, uh, intellectual property? This is a very, very real dynamic. So let's play this song, Dear Mama, and um, uh, – Let's just go, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to dive into this triple alphabet theory. Let's play this song, all right? Um, phone lines will not be open, brothers and sisters, so, yeah. All right? It will not be open. I don't know how many times I got to say Next that. Next person I'm in the deuce. Next person right. I'm in the deuce. I might as well see my little brother, because I get a bin, he get a bin. I get a roll, he get a roll. I get a jack, he get a jack. Anyway, I want everybody to give a big welcome for uh, Tupac. Hey, before we go into the song, I know everybody loves their mama. But I want to talk about something else first. I want to talk about the people that don't have their mama no more. Because we all sometimes forget to appreciate our mother. But like my little homeboy, Mutal, he don't got no mother today. While we all shedding smiles and being happy, they can't be happy because they don't got no mama. What, Danny boy, he's singing off for all of y'all mama. Danny boy out here making everybody feel good. He ain't got no mama to hug him. We got to get back to that old school shit where we all care for everybody. And all of us raise all these kids because we all out of hand. So last year about this time, I was sitting in a maximum security penitentiary. I couldn't sing this song for my mama, but I'm going to do it today for all y'all and all y'all moms. Dear mama, see this. Oh. When I was young, me and my mama had beef. 17 years old, kicked out on the streets. So back at the time, I never thought I'd see a face. Ain't a woman alive that could take my mama's place. Suspended from school and scared to go home. I was a fool with the big boys breaking all the rules. And shed tears with my baby sister. Over the years, we was poorer than the other little kids. And even though we had different daddies, 
same drama when things went wrong, we blamed mama. I reminisce on the stress I caused. It was hell. Hugging on my mama from a jail cell. Uh, and who think in elementary? Hey, I see the penitentiary one day. Running from the police, that's right. Mama catch me, put a whoop into my backside. And even as a crack queen, mama, you always was a black queen, mama. I finally understand, for a woman it ain't easy trying to raise a man. You always was committed, a poor single mother on welfare. Tell me how you did it, ain't no way I could pay you back. Look here, my plan to show you how I understand. Mom, you all appreciate it. And dear mama, and check this out. Put your hands in the air if you love your mama. Let me see. Just raise your hands in the air if you love your mama. Raise your hands in the air. Just dear mama. Ain't nobody tell us it was fair. No love for my ca- daddy because the coward wasn't there. He passed away, but I didn't cry. Cause my anger couldn't let me feel for a stranger They say I'm wrong and I'm heartless But all along I was looking for a father, he was gone I hung out with the thugs And even though they sold drugs They showed a young nigga love I moved on and started really hanging I needed money on my own so I started slanging But I ain't guilty cause even though I sell rocks It feels good putting money in your mailbox And I love paying rent when the rent's due I hope you got that diamond necklace that I sent to you. Cause when I was young, you was there for me. You never left me alone because you cared for me. And I can see you after school trying to make dinner. Fix us a hot plate. Just working with the scraps you was giving. Cause mama made miracles every Thanksgiving. But now the road got rough, you're alone. Trying to raise two bad kids on your own. Ain't no way I could pay you back. But my plan to show you that I understand on G. Appreciate it. That's Tupac. Dear mama, if you don't, if you, you know, everyone has a mom that's listening, whether she's uh, in the ancestral realm or she's here physically with you. All right. Know that song, y'all, for real. Plain and simple. Um, the man gave it to us. He left us with it. We're responsible for it. You understand what I'm saying? Um, you know, just quote unquote, on Holy Day is coming up, Mother's Day. You understand what I'm saying? And if you can't do nothing else, man, at least on the day that your mom still celebrates that day, do something, bro. You understand what I'm saying? And uh, if you got children with the woman, she's your children's mom. We have to recognize these facts, man, and do, and do something. You understand what I'm saying? Um, you might want to put your anger, your gripes, and all that other stuff aside. Say something pleasant, do something pleasant, all right? Go dive into these commercials, and then right after the commercials, we're going to jump right into the triple alphabet uh, theory. We'll be right back. This is Professor Grip on Serious Minds Radio. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. Wear your pride on your chest with Foxy's unique limited edition apparel for men, women, and kids. Check them out at myfoxy.com. That's M-Y-F-O-C-S-I dot com. At Foxy, they even have a variety of art, pillows, and more at MyFoxy.com. Use coupon code MMBTRS14 and get 10% off your order. Get Foxy. All them DVDs have got you covered for your DVD needs. History, Pan-Africanism, Religion, Metaphysics, Health, Astrology, Economics, and more. AllThemDVDs.com has over 7,000 titles. If you don't have it, we'll get it. Go to AllThemDVDs.com now for discounts. That's A-L-L-D-E-M-D-V-D-S.com or call 267-257-3270. Yes, All Them DVDs. Remember, AllThemDVDs.com. So, we love our skin. It's our standard of beauty and the first thing that anyone notices when they meet us. But did you also know that the skin is the largest organ in the human body and that what we rub into our skin affects our general health and well-being? My name is Gina and I created Naturals by Gina B because I wanted a better solution to the ineffective watery chemical lotions on the market. 
Naturals by Gina B is a line of products that are comprised of rich butters and oils that are emollient and free of parabens and artificial ingredients that are ultimately harmful to the skin. My body balms and scrubs are perfect for exfoliating and transforming you from dry and ashy to soft and healthy, the way nature intended. Visit me at naturalsbygenab.com for beautiful skin. Serious Minds Radio is the platform that addresses the complex issues of today affecting the human family. Your support is needed to help bring this solution think approach to our people through the tireless hours of work, research, and planning week after week. Your donations will allow Serious Minds Radio to continue our efforts of keeping creative thinking alive and the program informative while raising the consciousness level of our people. If you would like to support our efforts, please email us at SeriousMindsInfo at gmail.com. That's S-I-R-I-U-S-M-I-N-D-Z info at gmail.com. Your support and donations are seriously appreciated by Serious Minds Radio. Gods and goddesses, kings and queens, brothers and sisters, you're now tuned to Serious Minds Radio with the Minister of Information, Professor Griff of Public Enemy. All right. This is Professor Griff, and I am black. And we're going to dive into the triple alphabet theory. Just keep in mind, brothers and sisters, I need you all to take some notes, all right, because we're talking about the triple alphabet theory. This is one of the subjects I'm dealing with in my book, Symbology, which is going on sale for pre-sales. Uh, hold up. Let me get my date right here. It is going up for pre-sales. Uh, Monday. All right, so you'll be able to pre sale the book Symbology, the Psychological Covert War on Hip Hop Part 2. The book will be out June 17th, inshallah. All right, all right, so we're going to make it happen. So, brothers and sisters, here is the uh, triple alphabet theory. Let's make it happen. All right. I say all the time, soul. Is there some soul? Got a light burn? Light burn. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings, family. How's everyone doing? All right. All right. There's a few people I need to thank and a couple of things I need to get out of the way before we kind of get started. Is that right, everyone? Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. When well, the divine name of the Supreme Thing, I want to greet everyone with a civilized greeting and a very uncivilized time. Peace, Sharon, Hotep, Black Power, Good afternoon, Good evening. Whatever greeting that you go by, whatever school of thought that you come from, some people just nod their head. Whatever greeting that you go by, I want to greet you with a civilized greeting. Um, let's give it up for the House of Consciousness. Woo! I think this is my third or fourth time in the year to the George was here. How many people was coming in then? Woo! Okay, let's give it up for our good brother. Um some of the things that you've probably seen on, on YouTube, I wanna clear some of that up. Is that alright with everyone? Oh, yeah, yeah. Probably before we dive into this triple alphabet theory. In fact, this is only the second time I'm doing this lecture. Um, I tried it one time while I was they had kind of called me to do it. I set up to do it with an audience just like this. I was <coughs> into it and um the place was owned by some Freemasonic uh, people, and uh, literally I got through like maybe the sixth slide, and they was like itching a shut it down, kind of threw me out. That's all right. I'm sure that's not gonna happen here, right? Is that, uh, all right. Um, this is the thing we're gonna kind of get into, just to kind of clear the way, clear the air, clear the record, so we can kind of uh, move forward. Um, this is Norfolk, Virginia, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, I need y'all to bring that kind of spirit because there's a few questions I want to ask this particular audience here in Virginia as we move towards uh, uh, putting this infrastructure together through the African grapevine in order to survive. I know that's a mouthful, all right? But every place I go, it's like we all know one another, all right? And some people don't. You see each other sometimes, we see, sometimes we don't. Organizations, the heads of organizations, the spokespersons for organizations kind of never get together, all right? We have to change that particular dynamic, all right? 
I want to pause on that. Let me just think about that. I'm not just saying words to fill up time, y'all. You know? With all the organizations in Virginia, so we can set up some kind of strategic plan in order to survive in case there's martial law. How many people do you think I can get to that meeting? Okay, but all right, hold on. Let's not speak for the individual. Let's speak for the collective conscious group of us. All right? How many people do you think I can get to that meeting? You're absolutely correct, Mr. Dennis. That number in every single city. That's a beautiful thing, but it's a not so beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing because at least I can get five to ten, and those five to ten can move the mass. The sad part about that, you may not get the text <laughs> right or wrong, or the email, or the phone call. We have to change that particular dynamic. The next thing I'm about to say, I don't want anyone to get offended, all right? Especially if you've got a white friend. Is that cool with everyone? <laughs> Good, we're good. See, but y'all are not seeing everybody's beautiful face like I'm seeing. All right, some people are already uptight with me, but that's cool. We're going to work that out on the end. Is that cool? And let's just not pretend for the next few minutes. Is that cool, everyone? You got white friends like I got white friends. All right? Okay, so let me say this. We are responsible for their removal from our consciousness. Okay? Okay. And that was about a 200 applause meter. That's good. <laughs> so we don't work up to about a 10, but that's cool. At least we got two. Listen, you already uptight with me. So I don't even have that to worry about. And I already know some people from the government in the audience, right or wrong? Right, right. No, hold on. Can you move this? No, I just want to move this over. We won't leave this if anybody's working with the government. Is that cool? <laughs> if you like to get a front row seat, you can run on up front. Just make sure on your way out, you're about to need it. Is that cool? Thank you. The government got to support right or wrong? So I'm saying that to say this, brothers and sisters. If we're going to survive, and we will, all right, I just want to make sure you make it with us on the flip side of this thing, all right? You have to get involved in an organization or a study group. You have to. We have to link up with one another on some level. Are you following me? Yep. All right. I'm going to give you all a taste test. I need everyone to look around the room. Find a very unfamiliar face. Unfamiliar. I need everyone to stand up out of that comfort zone and everyone greet someone. Now, wait a minute, brothers. Don't hug the sister too hard. This is my wife, girlfriend, or something. Can we do that? Everybody stand up and greet someone. Just do that. All right. Give them a business card. Something. If you claim to know, all right, we must cease beating our people upside the head with what we think is the truth. They'll get it in their own time. You follow me? Every blade of grass doesn't grow at the same rate of speed. All right? You sitting on the mountaintop because maybe you wear a dashiki or a an kufi, the eye of raw, or whatever you want to beat up on the pig eating crisp paper. I'm just saying that ain't cool, but we say, well, listen, they got to grow in their own way, right or wrong. Right or wrong. Right. Get it when they go get it because it took you time to wear an ankh, right or wrong. Right. To come into consciousness. All right? Uh, I believe Elijah Muhammad said he sent us to teach the people and not beat the people. All right? There's always something I can learn better than, and more and better than the way I know it now, right or wrong. Mm -hmm. All right, it took us time to get to this point. How many people have ever known anyone that has ever found a diamond or found real gold? I know. All right, that's rare. You understand what I'm saying? And when you find it, it's not all shiny and pretty. Am I right or wrong? Right. You have to put, you have to put those particular things under heat, extreme pressure, in order for them to shine the way they do. So it is with the human being, all right? But we have to handle our people with compassion, and we have to act like, act like we care. All right, is that cool with everyone? Not sure. Are y'all sure? Right. Y'all can tell us you're being positive. Is that cool? Yeah. Okay. I'm saying all that to say this. Please don't beat up on me after. How you doing, brother? All right. I want to be able to get through this body of work I kind of laid out. For everyone to get the books so we're all on the same page. All right? Okay, cool. Last thing, um, Marcus Garvey, Elijah Muhammad, Nobu Chirali, all the rest of those particular leaders that I could mention had certain departments inside of uh, their the organization. They've always had nurses, right or wrong? Right. All right? We've always had people that did that with agriculture, right or wrong? Right. All right, so we have to begin to pull all these people together. Listen, whatever greatness you have lying dormant inside of you, we have to join, you have to join the organization because we need you. Are you following me? Oh, yeah. 
So now when it go down, and come on, brothers and sisters, you know it's about to happen. I mean, if you can sit quiet for a minute and take all the jewelry off and turn the computer off, all right, and put your, your fingers and your, your bare foot to the ground, you can feel what's about to happen. Are you following me? Let me tell y'all something straight up. These people are coming for you. Seriously, they are. All right? I'm not saying this to frighten anybody. You know they're coming. All right? You see, the difference between me and you is that I know they're coming already and prepared for them to come. You understand what I'm saying? I need to get you in that mindset. All right? Is everyone with me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Someone told me they made a t-shirt, man, and they cracked me up in the t-shirt and said, are you following me? I'm like, yeah, I say that that much? <laughs> are you following me? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so I want to dive into this thing. I call the triple alphabet theory. And just um, from the rip, when I mentioned it to Dre that I wanted to come um, do, a, do a new lecture, she said that people may be uh, disappointed that you're not going to dive into hip-hop. I said, well, I'll stay over Sunday and do the hip-hop thing. I don't, I don't mind if y'all don't mind. But um, I want to talk about the Alphabet Boys. I want to talk about um, the relationship between the Alphabet Boys. That's a great man. Like, can y'all see this? Can y'all see this? Okay, cool. Maybe it's just my old mind. I can't see it. Anyway, I want to connect the new sources, all right? I want to connect the new sources with the people that control the food that you eat. And the FDA is a front, because you know Monsanto control all the stuff that you eat. All right, we're going to talk about Monsanto in a minute. I wanted to talk about these man-made diseases that they put among the people via and through the CDC. All right? Uh, I want to talk about the CIA, ABC, the NBC, the BET, the MTV, the IMF, the IRS, and all the rest of the alphabet games. Are you following me? Oh, yeah. The ATF and the rest of them. All right? See, we say it so quick and so fast, we never think that all of these people ain't cool to one another. All right? They're connected via their blood oath. All right? You call it the Illuminati, you can call it whatever you want to call it. All right? But they're under oath, all right? They keep certain secrets, all right? And we have to understand, we have to understand this particular dynamic. Um, Sister Zaza was going to be here today, but she has some other business to take care of. Plus, she's coming out with her book, Black Matters, and she's diligently working on a particular book. And I asked Drea a few minutes ago, is it possible that she could come back here to launch her book? Is that cool with yeah. everyone? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, Get that. This is my information in case you don't have it. My phone number is 678 In case a lot of y'all like playing armchair revolutionary, this is my email address. Uh, Professor Griff, T-E at gmail.com. Um, this is a few books I have out, The Warrior's Tapestry, which is an audio book. Um, Psychological Covert Board, dealing with the Illuminati, Tickle of Hip Hop, Analytics, and the Acapella uh, Revolution. All right, me and Zaza do a show every Tuesday on blogtalkradio.com forward slash minds matter every Tuesday from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. How many people heard the last show? No one? Oh, you did. We did a two-part series. It's called The White Show. Just straight up about white people. No, we weren't talking about white people, but we wanted to talk about the history for the last 6,000 years to present. All right, it's a very interesting kind of study if you really put it under the microscope and really look at all the things that white people have done and done to black people and to the planet and in most cases to themselves. Are uh, you following me? The question that I have put out was asking people, can anyone name at least three accomplishments on a positive tip that white people contribute to the growth of humanity? Yeah, okay. No one? Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, 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 I got okay, one. Okay, forget that. <laughs> <laughs> nah. They're killing the Hitler, is that right? <laughs> no, but nah, they, they didn't kill him. Oh, <laughs> they say he killed himself, but we don't even need that. We'll talk about that. But how about this question? How about um name a time on the planet? that white people have not been at war. So these are some basic questions that me and Zaza kind of throw out. Can you name a period of time? <laughs> All right, some Afrocentric people among us say that they, we came out of uh, the interior of Africa, the Grimaldi's, 
Yeah. My phone number is 678 557 2919. Okay, hold on. Elias Muhammad said they've only been here for 6,000 years. Afrocentric said they've been here for 20,000 years. I just want to know, will there ever been a time on the planet where they haven't been at war? Ever since they came out of the caves? No. Because they get the name Caucasian, right? Right. Okay, cool. So we're going to move forward with the lecture, but if you have that answer, all right, I got a free DVD for anyone with that particular answer. Is that cool with everyone? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. No. Since Zaza is not going to be, I decided to maybe give a quote from her to you. All right, Sister Zaza says, some of us are warriors, some of us are not. Don't expect me to be a sheep when I'm a lion. That ain't going to happen. I respect your right to graze, respect my right to roll. Yeah. All right, let's give the sister a round of applause. Do not lose sleep over the opinions of sheep. Brothers, they're not sitting around waiting for you to decide what you're going to do about the idea of defending yourself against them. All right? It doesn't happen in nature. It's not going to happen today. All right? Either we're going to stand up, come together, put our religious ideologies aside for a minute. All right? Come together and find that common ground in which we can operate to survive. Is that cool with everyone? Mm -hmm. Okay. We have to understand that. Because my, it's been my model for a long time. The only thing I'm going to do is look over my right and my left shoulder and say, pass the ammo. Now, right plain and simple. Now, I'm saying, I'm going to make this next statement. Please don't get offended. I, she didn't invite me here to come offend people. But some people just don't get offended. All right? If you're not ready for the revolution, the revolution is complete, constructive, conscious, cosmic change. If you're not ready for the revolution, I don't mind if you sit to the sideline and put your cheerleading skirt on. I don't mind. Just move out of the way for a minute. But there's some of us, especially on the internet and other places. You know, the cyber thugs and the internet gangsters, all right, that like to throw monkey or monkey rich in other people's progress. Are you following me? We just kind of ask that you just step aside for a second because there are some people that do want to get together and see our way through this. Let me tell you something. I've met with brothers. They don't care to be mentioned. They're not on Facebook. They don't put their stuff on YouTube, all right? Some of these brothers truly, really have the answers to some of our problems. But guess what? They're afraid to come forth because they're afraid of what those brothers that are out there that claim to be conscious might do. These brothers have manuscripts on how to get us out of this madness. How can we create an environment to invite them, all right, so they can impart that knowledge uh, and on to us? How can we do it? Is it possible that we can create that here in Norfolk, Virginia? Oh, yes. Oh, I got one brother. Yeah. Can I get something from the audience, somebody? Yeah. I'm going to have to do some condensing. All right, give me a second. No, 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 give me a second. Let's talk about the triple alphabet theory. This lecture contains explicit sexual depictions, <laughs> descriptions, which may not be suitable for children. When I say children, I don't mean Tay Tay, Re Re, Man Man, Swan. All right? I don't, I don't mean that. I'm talking about if you're really not grown up in your thinking, all right, to the point where you can grasp some of these concepts, then this is probably not the lecture for you. Because trust me, you don't get mad within the next 20, 30 minutes. I'm just kind of warning you. All right? And if you don't, that's cool. That's a plus. Maybe we, when we take the duty intermission for 10, 15 minutes, you can go outside, throw up, yell, scream, call the reverend, whoever you need to call the, the mosque or whatever, and then come on back in. Is that cool? Okay, cool. <laughs> um, symbols are often metaphors in a process concerning creation and are not being presented merely to titillate the senses, but to teach life lessons. L-I-F-E, living in fear of extinction. All right? We need to understand that. All right? I don't want to read uh, all this stuff, but this is my good brother, Steve Pico. All right? If you've ever called my phone and got my answering machine, you hear me quote Steve Pico, and I said, uh, revolution is not an event. It's a process. All right? That's my good brother, Steve Pico. But Steve Pico says the most potent weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. All right? These people could never do what they do to us. All right? All right, without you, a willing participant in your own destruction. Are you following me? Yes. Yeah. I know you say, well, how do I, how do I, am I, how am I complicit mm -hmm. to my own uh, destruction? 
all right? It, at, at, at the rip from the doors, you're not fighting against some of these destructive things that you know are destructive, all right? Then you're complicit. Are you following me? Let's just do a taste test. How many people, seriously, I don't want to put anybody on the spot. How many people, seriously, just still in court? Just let's just be honest. Okay. All right. If we know and we did the science, all right, if we did the research and we said that um, pork, pig, whatever you want to call it, from the root to the duty to the tootie, leads to heart failure, right? And we give this body of work to you. It is up to the individual to study to convince themselves. It's not for me to convince you. Are you following me? All right, we have to understand it. But if you don't, that particular process, and write this down, make a mental note, is called durational suicide. Durational suicide. You're committing suicide but over a duration, a period of time. You know you're killing yourself. Now, other than a few brothers that was out and up in the front about eating pork, how many people are doing something that you know you're destroying yourself with? Thank you. Precisely my point. It's called durational suicide. Those are the things that we need to get in check. You see, you're complicit in your own destruction. The point now that I'm trying to make is, why can't we get together? Because all of us got the issue, one way or another, right or wrong. Right. Yours may be medication, theirs may be pork. Somebody may be sex, somebody may be something else, right or wrong. Why can't we get together and come up with a solution that will work for all of us without judging any of us? Is that cool? Yeah. Okay. Because it seems like the one that barked the loudest never do the damn biting, right or wrong. Right. Barking dogs don't bite, right or wrong. Right. They're too busy damn barking. <laughs> <laughs> Not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. You just let it marinate. That's all. Process it, bring it down. All right? Nothing, pardon me, pardon me, not everything that is faith can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faith. That was James Baldwin that gave us that. Last couple of quotes, and then we're going to dive into this thing. Birds born in a cage think flying is an illness. If you're born locked into the prison of your own mind, you think what we do and how we get together and the things that we resonate with, you think this is sick or oh, y'all crazy. You understand what I'm saying? I don't know about y'all and maybe y'all can testify to this. I'm that one, two, three, three people at, in, in my family, which is 13 of us. It's only three of us that are conscious and have knowledge yourself. And we're not invited to family reunion. We follow me. We're the ones that's talked about. We're the black sheep so to speak. Are you following me? Now how many people in this audience have the privilege of wearing that badge? I meet y'all all the time, man. It's always us. We had one person in the family that's conscious. And we're responsible for the family, right or wrong. And sometimes the family never gets it. But we just have to be patient, alright? Birds born in a cage think flying is an illness. Birds that do fly don't have to think about it. You know what they do? They just be themselves. All right? So if the sister was to come back and introduce me, she has to say, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you all to God having a human experience called grief. Right. And one or two people, thanks, catching the Holy Ghost. One person back there and two other people in the audience. That's it. All right? Because that, that concept is hard to grasp because you've been locked in your own prison. All right? You're the only one, people, Bob Marley is the only one that can free yourself. You have to free you. I'm going to say it again nice and slow. I'm God having a human experience called grief. Whatever you think God is, you're that. But you're having a human experience. Are you following me? So this, you're not a human having a spiritual experience. All right? You're a spirit being in this third dimensional paradigm having the human experience. So we have to do these human things, but you're a lot larger than that. Tell me you're not. How many times you've done something to shock your damn self? <laughs> right or wrong? Yeah. See, that's the guy trying to get out of you, trying to reacquaint him, him and herself with you. Are you following me? We have to understand that. Now listen, if you in the church, you may not understand that concept because everything you think of God is outside of the self. Right. And what I'm asking you to do is stop looking out there and look back into the self. Everything that we need to solve our problems of the self is inside of the self. Yeah. Are you following? Oh, yeah. Come on, y'all. We have the issue, we have to look internally. 
All right, listen, if, you, if you're still wrestling with the thing I just said about me being God and having a human experience, don't worry about it. It'll get your ass two weeks from mine. You'll be driving along and be like, damn. <laughs> All right? No other people on the planet look outside of themselves. And even when they look outside of themselves, this is why when the people on the planet worship the God and take the image, the anthropomorphic image, it always looks like them. That's right. You're right. Am I right or wrong? Yes. Right. right. Okay, so the God self. All right? The Creator is here. And brothers, sad but true, it's not just him, it's him and her. Mahat, the balance. Um, I sat with Ray Higgins and we tried to figure out, when did we ever come up with this concept of just calling God a man? All right? With everything in nature and duality, polar opposites. Balance, Mahat, truth, balance, justice, reciprocity, and order. Right? All right, cool. Let's dive into this. That sick and nearly dead. You see the DVD? Well, I want to give this away if anyone that can answer this question for me, all right? Man. 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 Ah, I didn't even hear that one. Man. Man. <laughs> what crawls on all four legs in the morning? But for the people that need to learn the lesson, can I even give it to them? <laughs> what crawls on all four legs in the morning and walks on two legs in the afternoon, walks on three legs in the night? Somebody that don't know. <laughs> you way in the back. You got a mouthful of food. You can't even answer that question. You got your hands up. <laughs> All right, somebody, somebody, give me that. Man. Man, why is man? How does that work? Why, when he's a baby, he crawls on all fours. When he's a man, he walks on twos. When he's an old man, he walks on all twos with a cane. Right. Oh, yeah. The solution, a man who crawls on all fours as a baby, who walks on two legs as an adult, and walks with a cane in his own age, in order for you to enter into the city without getting eaten up by the devourer, all right? You have to answer the question to the riddle, all right? Questions like this plague black people. Why we can never get along? Why we can't come together? Why, 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 why? We need to look inside of the self to come up with these answers. Are you following me? Listen, no more books are going to be written about the problem or the solution to black people's issues. They've already been written. Can anyone tell? I'm serious. All the other books that are coming out borrow from all the other books. All right? The prophets have been here. The messengers have been here, both male and female. All right? So my question is, and excuse my language if I get before you slip of the tongue, what the hell are we waiting on? What else do we need? Bullhorns on the top of a tank, rolling down the street, all right? All black people, please report to yada, yada, yada. You need that happening? There's been an outbreak. I need all black people to report to the whatever. Buses are lined up. Lower black people on buses take you to the stadium and lock you, lock you down, all right? You get three square meals a day, all right? Everyone's been injected. This one has to happen, this cataclysmic event. What else has to happen? They got to wage outright war openly on black people for us to stand up and come together? Uh, see, most of them have to be forced to do something right, right or wrong. I'm saying those of us that are here, we are the rare ones. We're here at the meeting. This is the start, right or wrong? Right. Why can't we just take a minute, take a deep breath, all right, and commit ourselves to the liberation struggle of our people to remain on the planet? All right? This very meeting right here, I'm telling you, man, this depends on our survival, depends on this. You may not ever see me again, right or wrong. Right. We have to do this, Virginia, seriously. We got to make it happen, and we got to start right here, right now. All right? Sister Drea says she don't mind having a meeting here. You understand what I'm saying? We just, we just have to be committed enough to come to the meeting, all right, and make it happen. Can anybody give me their definition of what government actually means from your perspective? Right. Yes, sir. Pardon me? Control, exactly. Who else? All right. The English language is a bastard language. Yes. It's a language made up of different languages. That's right. If you go to the root of the English language, more than likely, in any dictionary, you'll find the Latin root. Mm -hmm. All right. When you follow the Latin root, all right, of government, you end up with the whole idea of control. Not Janet Jackson's control. I'm talking about real control. Are you following me? All right. So let's understand this particular dynamic politics. All right. We have to understand politics. 
Why? Because in Rex 84, King Alpha Plan, they wrote you in as units. All right? Sheeple. All right? Docile. And we have to keep this particular thing in mind. Okay. If a nation expects to be ignorant and free, it, ex um, it expects what never was and never will be. You cannot be ignorant and free at the same time. All right? Let's keep this particular thing in mind. Homeland security. An evil exists that threatens every man, woman, and child of this nation. We must take action to ensure our domestic security and protect our homeland. All right? Bush didn't say that. Adolf Hitler said it. All right? The same thing that's going on now in certain aspects went on in the past, especially in Nazi Germany. And this is what we're experiencing. So guess who's going to be the ones behind the fence? Yes, the rich doctors, the lawyers, the entertainers, the sports players, all of us are going to be behind the fence. All right? Plain and simple. Now, Uncle Mick said, well, they don't kill you because you're Muslim or Christian. All right? They kill you because you're black, right or wrong. Right. And we need to understand that particular dynamic. All right? It says, we shall not exonerate Saddam Hussein for an action. We will mobilize to meet this threat to our vital interest in the Persian Gulf until the amicable solution is reached. Our best strategy is to be prepared, failing that we are coming to kick your ass. Now can you look into this particular slide and tell me what you see? Okay. The alphabet boys. You see the alphabet boys, you see the petroleum and energy companies, all in cahoots with one another. And if you write that a mental note of all of these people, these are the same people that's waging the war behind the scenes, the war on terrorism. They're the ones in Afghanistan, Iran, but want to uh, move on Iran, are already there in Iraq, all right, or Iraq, all right? These are the same people, these multinational corporations that get together. And if we took time to decode the symbols, all right, which I think we should do a little bit later. Can we do that? Yeah. Matter of fact, let's not even do it there. Let's do it now. Because you see, it's not a shell at all. Mm -hmm. All right? The so-called rising sun is set on a red background, which represents the red square, and the red square is in Russia. Communism. You should already know that the communists, all right, was invented by the capitalists. The capitalists. All right? Exxon. Exxon is a, a cross of a range, not a double cross. Well, it's been fitting that double cross because that's what you did, double cross. Anyway, but it's the cross of Lorraine. And they use, and all of this is the cross of Lorraine, tip of sideways, that's it. All right? But the colors are always three colors. All right? This is that third dimensional paradigm that I'm about to get into. All right? They lock all of us into this third dimensional paradigm. Let me give you a taste test. We'll get back to this. They say we should eat how many meals a day? Three square meals a day, right? Why three? Come on, talk to me. Why three? See, so you don't even know. Because sometimes so you lock it to a third dimension. All right? How many Christians do we have in the house? How many names do you have? Three. Three. All right? Traditionally. First, middle, and last name. Why? Brothers and sisters, I need nothing. I need y'all to talk to me, man. Seriously. Well, we got to just turn up the, uh, the vibrational pitch of our thinking. We got to figure these things out. Because if these things are happening to us and all around us we're participating in it, but you don't know why, then you don't think that's a problem? Okay, okay. Give you another taste test. You get pulled over by the police. They take you downtown. They give you the third degree. What's the third degree? Come on now. Question is. If this stuff is not steeped in um, Masonic ritual, then what is Three square meals a day, they give you the third degree, all right? You have three names, every flag that you see is always three colors. Anytime you see it, why is this? All right, we need to begin to answer these questions. Let me tell you something. Here's something that you can take with you. From this moment forward, well, not this moment, probably after the election, because I don't want you to catch me out there. When you have a conversation with someone, do not use words that you cannot define. How's that? Can we do that? You know, that's kind of strange. Can we do that? Yeah, right. Right? I've seen a car on the way, it's called the Acura. What is the Acura? What does it mean? It was a drink, I've seen a brother drinking, the Sobe. S-O-B-E? What is the Sobe? What is that? 
See, we digest these things, we're trying to cause, we're interacting with one another and things, and we don't have a clue as to what these things mean. So you're just existing in somebody else's reality. Right or wrong? Right. We have to change that particular dynamic. All right? Um, Amico gas station is the torch. All right? This is the symbol of the Illuminati, holders of the light, because they call themselves the light bearers. All right? They're, they're supposed to be the enlightened ones. So what they do is they hide these things in plain sight. All right? And BT, you already know what that is. That's what British people, right or wrong? Okay, cool. So if we kind of look into things instead of at things, then we can understand something. I don't want to break down the whole idea of Western dictionary of what theory is, but no one understands the supposition or the system of ideas um, intended to explain something. We already know that. But theory is a system of ideas intended to explain. All right? Keep that particular thing in mind. It's a system. All right? So we're talking, it's not necessarily bad. Some people in a smoke-filled back room, right, conspired, got together and came up with a system that they were going to use, and what they call the system is the whole idea of politics is a society of governing people. They came together, all uh, right, in an agreement to perform together either legal or illegal, whether it's a subversive act, covertly or overtly, all right? They put together a system to control the masses of the people. And guess what? Your ass wasn't invited to the meeting. <laughs> Are you following me? Yeah. Now, we need to understand this particular dynamic. So when one of us gets the information and brings it to you, all right, why is it that you always shut down on basic stuff that your ass don't even understand from the first place? So let's be real about this. So the whole idea of conspiracy almost acts as a trigger word. As soon as we hear it, the brain shuts down, oh, it's not true. Okay. Did they not say that the Tuskegee Sippers experiment was a conspiracy theory? That's what they said, but it didn't actually happen. Yes. Black men was injected with syphilis. All right? And they took home and made with their wives and had children, and then they ended up with syphilis. Nurse Rivers and all the white doctors that participated in the uh, Tuskegee Sippers experiment lived happily ever after. Am I right or wrong? That dynamic has to change. <clears throat> this is what you're seeing right here is called the Hegelian dialectic principle. All right? Just look up Hegel and study his work. The Hegelian dialectic principle. Problem, reaction, solution. Now let me tell you something. I'm just, just saying just for me, probably a song, I can speak for a couple of other brothers. There was a, a stabbing at a school the other day. What was that? This person we're in Pennsylvania? <laughs> This cracker went through the school, stabbing people with a knife. 20 people. I mean, what kind of doctor, what kind of people go to this school that he can stab 20 people? Man, you get the shit, oh, excuse me, you get, you get laid the hell out if you run through school. I went to my high school, I went to run through the hallway with a knife. Unless the people are sedated. Unless the, and he's a man sharing a candidate and he's activated. Are you following me? We have to understand this particular dynamic, and this is very, very, very real. The problem, reaction, solution. Listen, the same people that cause the problem, all right, well, all right, and guess what? The same people that offer you the solution are the same people that cause the problem in the first place. Right. It's called the Hegelian Dialectic Principle, and it works every single time. Because you ain't got hit to how it works. All right? White boy takes a knife. Stabs 20, kills four, it ends up in the news, they blow it up, all right? You get scared, you scream that you want more protection in the schools, then there's tighter regulations at the school. Right? That's how it works. And it gets tighter and tighter and tighter to the point where you feel the noose around your neck. Are you following me? Stop falling for the trick, brothers and sisters. This is one man I can honestly say. And if you all watch my YouTube lectures, I told you I can't wait until we all, all of us should have some good white friends, right or wrong. Yeah. So I brought a few with me, and one of them is William Cooper. In his book, Behold the Pale Horse, all right, William Cooper was one of those that dared to speak truth to power, but he ended up getting a bullet in the head, all right? And there's a few other brave people like uh, William Cooper, all right? Now listen. The 1991 book predicts shooting by drug individuals in order to disarm the public. All right? It says the government encouraged the manufacture and importation of firearms for the criminals to use. This 
is intended to foster a feeling of insecurity which would lead the American people to voluntarily disarm themselves by passing laws against firearms. Greetings once again, Professor Griff. Hope everything that you've seen thus far, you're processing it, you're digesting it, you take Serious Minds Radio is brought to you thanks to the sponsorship of Like Minds, Like Minds. Like Minds, Like Minds is proud to be a sponsor of Serious Minds Radio, the show that addresses the complex issues today affecting the human family from the solution think approach that tackles confusing and complex issues through the hip hop lens hosted by none other than Professor Griff, the co founding member of the legendary hip hop group Public Enemy. This show is real talk that is serious for your mind radio. Gods and goddesses, kings and queens, brothers and sisters, you're now tuned to Serious Minds Radio with the Minister of Information, Professor Griff of Public Enemy. It culminated on the desire in these people to open fire on schoolyards and stuff that explains the anti-gun lobby. The Gillian dialectic principle all day, every day. Taking patients out of mental institutions, drugging them up, all right, putting them under hypnosis and training them to kill people, and then giving them the trigger word via their cell phone, all right, to pull out the knife and pull out the gun and shoot people down. This is what's going on as we speak right now. It says Bill Cooper's speech, all right, back in 01. Whatever's going to happen, they are going to blame on some of his lines. Don't, uh, don't you, don't you, it says, don't you even believe it. Now, we're going to get into the whole Bin Laden thing, the CIA. We're going to get into the DOD, which is the Department of Defense. We're going to break all of this down. All right? Nonetheless, Milton William Cooper died in uh, uh, 2001 um, on some trumped up charge that he didn't pay some kind of ticket. They came to arrest him, and they ended up shooting him down. All right? Now, I'm 53 years old. I, I should not even put that in the way. I can't read that. <laughs> Anyway, I read the book. In this particular book, deal with secret society and the psychological warfare. When I was writing my book, The Psychological Warfare, uh, Covert War on Hip Hop, I started studying psychology from the lens that white people give us. And I kind of figured that the, um, at, the, at the end of my study, the term psychology, ology is the study of, and the psyche I, is the soul. So when I started writing the book, it hit me one night, I said to myself, these people are not waging a physical war against black people. These people, man, were thriving in their careers. Very brilliant people at the top of the field. All of them were murdered. All right? These microbiologists. Why? Because the United States government through the CDC, all right, World Health Organization, had plans to release certain germs, all right, certain diseases, all right, certain outbreaks had to happen at certain intervals. All right, they kill off a certain amount of people. All right? How many of you have seen the movie Apocalypse Africa? These people were digging mass graves. All right, no funerals. They were wiping out whole entire villages and just taking a bulldozer and bulldozing black Africans into a massive pit and just covering it over with dirt. All right? Very, very critical. How to control the nation. Distract them, deceive them, and then divide them. All right? Distract them, deceive them, and then divide them. Occultists worship numbers. They exchange the truth of God for a lie and worship the create uh, the creature rather than the creator. This is very real. So when we talk about the occult, all right, let's not get spooky, all right? Cult, so the root word for culture, that's all it is, all right? But when you start talking about the occult, you're talking about these people that got together and they come up with certain rituals. Like, I truly believe that Blue Ivy, Jay-Z, and Beyonce's little child, I think I'm telling you, that's black and white magic. That's a cultic language that they use. All right? We have to be very, not, not familiar with it, but know and understand that's how it works. The CNS, which you probably never heard of, Christian News Service. Conservative U.S. media, media is multi-ethnic destruction in America, or maniac European devils in action, outlets, and news live services. Most of us get, am I moving too fast? Oh, okay. Most of us get the news information from two news live services. All right, the AP, which is the Associated Press, and the Reuters, those other people, I don't know where they're from. Anyway, media ownership, it went from 50 corporations 
all the way down to about three now. Do you know what this means? Three white dudes could sit in a smoke filled back room and determine everything that you see on TV, read in the magazines, and see in the movies. Three people, all right? All of the alphabet boys. NBC, CNN, BBC, Fox, and the rest of them all work in cahoots with one another. All right? And this is very real. So the question is continually asked in conspiracy circles, dealing with the conspiratorial view of not only history, but the future. The question is asked about 9-11. It says, who did 9-11? I'm saying to you, let's just act like no one knows. But somebody had to know because they put it in a cartoon back in 1979. They put it in a movie uh, put out by Warner Brothers back in 1999. Alright? It says in, 19, in 1997, DreamWorks filmed The Peacemaker with George Clooney and shot perfectly between the aisles 9 and 11. 9 and 11. Alright? Columbia Trice on 1991 Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Caution. 9 11. 1998 Godzilla movie. 9 11. 1990 Warner Brothers Gremlins. 9 11. The Simpsons. 9 11. And this is years and years and years and years before it ever happened. Coincidence? Right. Evil programming, yes. Nineteen ninety-eight, the big, uh, the big, uh, uh, help me out. Lebowski. That must be Polish or Russian. Lebowski. Uh, the, the date, the date's check, September eleventh, nineteen ninety-one. Nineteen ninety, Problem Child, starring John Ritter. Nine eleven. I mean, we can go on and on. How much of this you want to see in order to be convinced that that just didn't happen? That happened. All right? Orchestrated in a very real kind of way because they put it in popular. Let me tell you something. It's called hidden in plain sight. They put it right in front of you. Programming through the mass media. Mass media and media forms designed to reach the largest audience possibly. They include television, movies, radio, newspapers, magazines, books, records, video games, and the internet. Alright? And they use all these particular mediums to get you to obey. So now what we're dealing with is the last four major networks that control everything that you see. Why is it that all the newscasters, regardless of their ethnicity or nationality, all of them sound the same? All of them have the same story. All of them speak the same because they get their news from the same source. All right? And this is very real. Let me skip over some of this. I got some other things to show you. It says the IRS, they might own the IRS. This is not going to talk about that. We'll, we'll get that chat a little bit later on. Because what the IRS is like, well, you know the IRS is not part of the United States government, is that correct? Right, right. The post office is not part of the United States government. All right? Yeah, right. Federal Express, I mean, Federal Reserve is not part of the United States government. We know this already, right? right, right. But if you don't know, I put it in my book, The Psychological Corporate War, to give you a list of all these so called alphabet boys, all these agencies, they are not part of the United States government. The IRS is privately owned. Post office is privately owned. Federal Reserve private, privately owned. All right, not part of the United States government. All right, IRS is not the U.S. government agency. It's the agency of the IMF. Did you hear me? Okay, the IMF is an agency of the U.N. Those boys that are out there, you know, if you read the Black Law Dictionary. The U.S. has not had a treasury since 1921. The U.S. Treasury is now international the IMF International Monetary Fund. <laughs> <laughs> that was a you slip. <laughs> Number six, the FCC, CIA, FBI, NASA, and all the other alphabet gangs were never part of the United States government, even, even though the United States government held shares of stock in the various agencies. They're not part of the government. Not the government. The government owns stock in their agencies. Alright? 
Barack, Barack Obama is the president of the Corporation of the United States. Yep. All right? Yep. The alphabet boys are not part of the United States, but they act. And they got you thinking, because you're locked into the third dimensional paradox, you can't break free of it. So some of y'all catch cases of mail fraud, mm. and you get brought up on charges. But the post office is not part of the government. So how does that happen? Anyway, uh, there are no judicial courts in America, and there has not been since 1987. Judges do not enforce statutes and codes, yada, yada, yada. Okay, we have one world government, one law, and one monetary system. All right? The UN is a one world super government. This is very critical. It talks about the illusion of choice. All right? The whole idea. Now, you can choose. You could have your child sit down and watch the Discovery Channel or the Cartoon Network. And you stand with between both of them. Are you following me? Because neither one of them are any good. So to the movie companies, the Metro Golden Mayors and the Foxes and the rest of these people, are they in cahoots with the Pentagon, the DOD, and the military industrial and the prison industrial complexes? Yes, they are. All right? TDS, CNN, Anderson Cooper in his 360. Rupert Murdoch. So when we start talking about mass control and the mass control engineering human consciousness, we have to go into the whole idea of why they want you to obey. This brings me right to my next point, which is social media. I know you have a Facebook page. Oh, thank you, because you wasn't about to read about this. Listen, brothers and sisters, Facebook is nothing but a data collection agency. All right? And you voluntarily data or yes, you do. Miss, little Miss Johnson, the rest of you give all the information because you don't send a picture up there and you don't give this date of birth and happy New Year's and happy birthday so happy birthday so and so. Uh, are you follow data collection agency? All right, you volunteer all your information, so it's not a surprise that when, when it was when it was brought out in the news that Facebook is working right along with the NSA, the National Security Agency, on spying on the American public. Hell, they ain't got to follow you. You tell them every damn thing. I swear, and I caught my daughter like, on, 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 like 30, 40 days in a row. What is Facebook? I'm like, look, no, seriously? <laughs> Some of y'all do that? <laughs> Good morning, Facebook. <laughs> so you think Facebook's supposed to answer? <laughs> <laughs> this is critical. But the sad part about that, brother, when, when, when Facebook starts to merge with Walmart, and Walmart merged with the airline, and then the airline merged with the bank. Then you on lockdown, because where you gonna go, where you gonna get your money, then where you gonna get your food. And then how you gonna communicate, I swear, if Facebook shut down right now, some people will commit suicide. Because they don't have a goddamn life. They really don't. So Facebook and Apple hooked up with the National Security, Security Agency. So we started to do some research on who is doing. Y'all need to stop believing that damn line. If these white boys in these little garages coming up with Apple and Microsoft, and it's the same lie told over and over. You're right or wrong. It's the same white boy with his friend that was in the garage and he got a little Christmas toy and he ended up he ended up he ended up with a multi-billion dollar company like Apple and Facebook. Right. It's the iPhone 5S. Thank you for being honest, that lady. And the brother and the sister in the back. The iPhone 5 does have a touch technology, all right? And the touch technology is designed for one or two purposes. To get your information to enter into the database. They need your fingerprint, and they're using facial recognition software at the airport and at the ATM machines. When you go in instantly to go put your card in, automatically they know that's you. Your facial recognition software reads your face. There's a camera on the ATM machine. And, um, the true voice technology, remember um, Whitney Houston did the true voice commercials. All right? The voice, eye retina scan, facial recognition software, and your fingerprint. The next step now to collecting the data. To collecting the data is the fingerprint on the iPhone 5S. Why? Simply because along with the CDC and the World Health Organization, certain things are happening right now as we see along with the Drug Enforcement Agency, was it the DES? We're going to talk about that in a second. So the iPhone 5F was released. I want to ask a very quick
critical question in a few minutes. It's dealing with touch technology, right? Apple's touch ID sensor is located beneath the home button. So basically, you touch it using your thumb, and most of us for the last three years have been doing this, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Index finger and your thumb. Data collection. These people call themselves men of coordinates. Remember this. Because on a subconscious level, you think they're not collecting data, and they are. Remember, 10 years ago, you was given your, your, um, your, your, uh, your zip code, at Home Depot and all the right, right, right. you gave them that information. Facebook, you give them all your information. Right? Come on now, now you give them your fingerprint. Right. Mm -hmm. Come on, are you right. your emotions? Third dimension now. Alright? Third dimensional lockdown. On Facebook, you're giving them your emotions. You argue with people on Facebook. You're expressing yourself. Alright? All this data you're giving them. Now so now when the itch jump off <laughs> There's no place for you to go. Now they know every emotion, every feeling, every facial expression because you gave it to them. Right? So then when they start to merge the robotics along with the humans, all right, then we're going to have problems because now the truth that you're going to see coming up and down the street here in Norfolk, Virginia, they're not even going to speak English. And you're not going to be able to communicate with them. So the iPhone 5 that was released, all right, Beyonce and Jay-Z are so beyond... This particular technology is not funny. They've been using phones with activated software in order to activate it. It's voice activated. All right? It's voice activated. The new gun that's hitting the street is an incredible viral microchip activated. In order to turn the gun on to use it, you have to have the chip in your hand. All right? So the iPhone 5S came out at the same time. The drug hit the street. But what drug are you talking about, Professor Grip? This is the drug that's preceding the one I'm about to tell you about. Molly has been a common drug lately. Everyone is trying it. You pop one and you're sweating. Let me explain why you're sweating. It's a drug that has cocaine, crack, ecstasy, and bath salt all in one. Now, if you pop a couple of Molly this morning, I'm not talking about you. But I'm saying, but I'm saying, it has cocaine, crack, Ecstasy and bath salt. When this hit the street, man, they said people were eating one another. <laughs> but guess what? We are highly melanated people. We're not stupid. All right? The self defended the self. All right? Even with some, even with, with some duck on it at the helm, it defended itself, and it didn't work among black people. We caught on, and we went right back to weed. Whatever the hell we was doing. <laughs> what are you following me? We went right back to Henny and all that other shit. <laughs> I'm just saying. So the new drug that hit the street is going right past you, the, the uh, intelligent adults. It's called crocodile. Uh, Wait a minute. I just want to ask the question. The iPhone 5 just came out where you got to use the fingertip technology. And then at the same time, the drug hit the street. So if I steal your phone, does I mean I got to take your hand too? It watch you from the inside out. Now this drug comes out of Russia. And you know we ain't in no laboratory in Russia cooking shit up. Now you know that. But they'll blame it on some black people. It rots your flesh. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't need to hear me. No, man, they're not hearing me. Wouldn't you think that if you hit some crocodile and you get a little sore on your wrist, you're like, I'm not doing this no more. You better wait till your ankle right away to the bone. Anyway, we're going to pause so we can take 10 minutes, 15 to 15 minutes, sisters. All right, can we take a 15 minute break? Everybody stand up, go outside, take a breath of fresh air, do something, all right? Uh, engineering human consciousness, all right? And one of the ways that they're going to engineer human consciousness is control the people, data collection from the people, have the people voluntarily give up the information to me because these people are moving towards their particular goal, and they even said, and I put it in the book, one drop at a time, all right? One drop at a time. Men up toward this, moving towards their goal, dealing with controlling the masses through 
engineering of human consciousness. You can't see this, but what this actually is, the police officers are going to be equipped with contact lenses. Alright? They're going to give police officers contact lenses, and inside of the contact lenses are going to be the information that the police officer needs and all of the data on you. Alright? So the technology that you see when a cop pull up behind you, you might see him go on his computer and pull all your information up. Well, the contact. Well, the contact lens um, will scan, the contact lens will retrieve data. Alright? It's going to retrieve data from your inflatable power microchip in your hand and your forehead. Alright? All right, so the Terminator Eye high tech contact lenses show text and maps. All right, it may present it to you as though you buy the contact lenses and all your information on your uh, Facebook page can come up without you even going to your Facebook page. I know you're looking at me like, what the hell are you talking about? Are you following me? Oh, this is real, man. These people. Wicked. These people are you damn right. Wicked, wickedly wise. <laughs> All right, and we need to understand that particular dynamic. All right, but in order for you to receive the contact list, is that you can read your read your uh, your emails and your data from your Facebook um, without you going on the computer. All right, you have to kind of sign up for it. You sign up for it. The prerequisite is the fact that you have to have the implantable power microchip. Guess why? Because they have to shut you down when they want to shut you down. All right? Some of y'all are driving cars right now with the low jack system in it, right? Right, right, right. Try not, try not paying that goddamn car number to see what happens. Right. They're going to lock you right on out of your damn car. Am I right or wrong? That's right. And this is very real. See, but they present it to you and make you think that this is something that you need. Right. All right? This is a new thing that you have to have. Well, you got to get these contact lenses. All right? Because they're beautiful. They match your blonde hair that you might have or whatever. Are you following me? They make you look slim. But it's how they're going to feed it to you. Better complexion. You can make love with the contact lens better. Are you following me? This is how they feed to you with complexion. Oh, that's serious. You going to go out and buy this. The eighteen thousand dollar contact lens. Finance. All right. For seven years, right? It's very critical. So the contact lenses, the police officers in the military are going to be equipped with the contact lenses. The lady at the bank, at the insurance company. All right. Knowing that whether or not all your records are going to come up in their eyes anyway, so they're going to look you straight in the face and know that your ass lying. <laughs> are, you, are you following me? So we have to be, we have to stay on top of certain kinds of. I'm not going to read tech, dude. I don't read tech magazines. And but when this, when I read that, I was like, wow, this is critical because I can see how they can take this and implement it, right? To the point where they set up roadblocks in the hood, all right? When they tell you to put your hand, keep your hands on the steering wheel, the only thing they gonna do is walk, look. The contact lens is going to scan your face, all your data going to come up, and they're going to go back to their car. Are you following me? All right, and this is very real. Oh, that's right. Let me put the wire of the laptop up to me. Now, I guess I got to tell you all about it. Microphone's in the mic. Oh, you must be born in the ghetto. Yes, I'm proud of it. Born in the ghetto, only right that we should die here. I can't even would not know, but it's all clear. All right. All right. The white woman is driving along, all right? Roadblock is set up. The police divert her into a, a, a parking lot. They come over to the car like they do. Now, notice they don't come on the right side to drive the side no more. All right, because too many of them pop. Yep. They come on the other side now. So if the driver's going to shoot them, you got to shoot across your passenger. So they're looking in the car now to driver's license, ID, and insurance card. Okay. All right? Along with those three questions, normally it's a casual conversation to smell your breath, to see if you've been drinking, and then they come to do a field investigation as they're talking to you. All right, where you been? Where you going? I didn't want to smell your breath to see if you've been drinking. 
All right, but the next few questions they are about to ask is this. Can we take your blood? We will pay yes. We will pay you 10 to $20 for your DNA. These are the questions that are going to be asked by the police department. All right? And, it's, it, and I'm telling you, they're mandating it now. 30 cities are doing it, and the, what they're doing is they have allotted $8 million all right, to pay people for their blood and their DNA. All right? Wait a minute, why are you looking at me all crazy? A minute ago, y'all were the same ones that signed the back of your driver's license for them to take your organs. And now they're taking your organs. Right or wrong? Did right. y'all know they took Trayvon Martin's organs? Dick Gregory reported this. He, she was slaying the damn morgue as a, what's the name, a John Doe for three days. Kendrick Anderson and a few other people that they found dead. They exhumed the body and brought the body back up to open the body up and found out they had stolen the organs and stuffed the body with newspaper. I'm going to show you the pictures tomorrow. This is very critical. So you, you the one that volunteered someone giving your organs away. Now you have to do it at the DMV. You can no longer sign your driver's license. Do you know why? Because young kids do not have driver's license. Young kids are dying at an alarming rate, and they want the nice, fresh, young organs that have not been polluted with weed and alcohol and drugs. All right? Gentleman that inspired to be an actor all his way from Atlanta through Las Vegas to LA ended up in the desert. Throat slit, they took his eyes and they took his organs. Organs on the black market, huh? according to Baba Dick Gregory. Hundreds of millions of dollars. They tell you something, man. They want your body parts. Plain and simple. Well, brothers, they wanted yours for a long time, but you just, anyway. You've been giving it away to pick your ass for flat and rest of the man. Racism. Racism, white supremacy. All right, so live and well. All right. This demon here says, I killed six people and injured 12 others. I wasn't called a terrorist by the media, and I got my day in court. All right. This gentleman here, I killed eight people. They didn't call me a terrorist in the media. I got my day in court. I remember this cracker. Wasn't he the one that shot the damn movie theater in Colorado? That man. I killed 12 people and injured 58 others. They didn't call me a terrorist in the media. I got my day in court. I don't remember this dude. It says, uh, I killed 26 people. They didn't call me a terrorist in the media. Uh, I shot myself and otherwise I would have had my day in court. Right? says, we killed three random black people. They didn't call us terrorists in the media. We got our day in court. But the brother, I was said to have killed six people. They didn't prove it. I got labeled as a terrorist by the media. The government put a million dollar bounty on my head. They targeted me with predator drones. They chased me like an animal and burned me alive. That's what they do to the brother. But these people could kill all kinds of you see is these are Manchurian candidates programmed by the government, activated them in the movie theater, in the schoolyard, on the college campus. Are you following me? For the purpose of tightening these laws around the, the necks of, uh, of the American people. This is very critical. Now, let's talk about one of these particular uh, incidents that happened. <laughs> Listen, brothers and sisters, y'all know me. I don't give a Rats ass whether you believe me or not. This is not up to fit into your corny ass little box that you do your damn thinking in. Are you following me? I ain't asking you to believe a damn thing I say. Washington, D.C. Navy Yard shooter linked to CID investigation and attempted arrest of Barack Obama for treason. In a nutshell, through the African grapevine, they said that the same 12 people that the Navy Yard shooter shot down in cold blood was the same team that they had put together to come and to arrest Barack Obama for treason. They were on their way to arrest Barack Obama and the Navy Yard shooter shot him down. All right? Someone had to know something. So let's see how it, un it, un it unfolds. So when it talks about the nature of the, those that investigate the CIA, the agents assigned to the NS, the NCIS, are normally dressed as appropriate civilian attire. Alright? So when they came to, to talk and interview the people, some of the people shut down on them simply because some of the people knew the inside workings and what was going on. 
then maybe y'all should have already said he was on some psychotropic drugs. And probably a cocktail and a mixture of different kind of drugs. Alright? And the weapons were put in place because they already went through the drills. And he's gone over the drills in his mind on a daily and consistent basis. So when he got the phone call and they activated him, he knew exactly what to do. I want to ask you a question because this sounds really kind of far-fetched. Did anyone name three of the 12 people that were shot down? Precisely my point. You don't know. It was a, it was a, um, um, a team that was put together, and they were going to arrest going to arrest the president of the United States of America. All right, and and they that was responsible for activating him did not want that to happen. So what they did was they created an uh, Manchurian. One, two, one, two. All right, it's Professor Griffin. I'm black on Serious Minds Radio. What you've been listening to, all right, for the last hour, I believe, is a triple alphabet theory, a lecture that I put together and did in um, Norfolk, Virginia um, in, in 2014. And as I go back over this triple alphabet theory to do the necessary research for my book, The Psychological Covert War on Hip Hop, Part 2, which is called Symbology, I'm finding that um, a lot of this information I should have put in book one because the symbolism is very, very critical and um, and very applicable to the time in which we live in, and we need to get this information, like, now, for real. Um, I really appreciate you all um, uh, tuning in. In the coming weeks, um, hopefully we're going to have um, Kamal Carbone. We're going to deal with the Black Pack on getting prepared as far as survival is concerned. And we're going to deal with our debates and battles that's going on um, in the black community. Um, is it for entertainment or can we draw from it? All right. I hope you all understood the dialogue that, that went on at the beginning of the show with myself and, and Minister Server. Uh, we're going to see what's going to happen within the next couple of weeks as opposed to, uh, I mean, not opposed to, but as far as what goes on with Africa, bam, bada. All right. Um, you know, I was wrestling with the whole idea of Prince checking out here. I'm still doing some research and gathering the information on what happened to Prince. Um, while that was happening, woke up this morning to Afeni Shakur passing away. Once again, to the Shakur family, um, we give a definite shout-out. We're going to send our positive energy um, your way. All right, brothers and sisters, this is Professor Griff here on Serious Minds Radio. And inshallah, hopefully I will even see you all next week or the week after. But... In the meantime, between time, revolution is not an event. It's a process. All right? Let's play this joint so we can get out of here. Peace, y'all. I will see y'all. Um, Funk Jazz Cafe, May 21st. Funk Jazz Cafe. Go to funkjazzcafe.com. And that's cafe with a K. All right? Funkjazzcafe.com. May 21st is the, um, the, uh, the first day of the shooting for Artifactual Film. All right? Artifactual film. Go to www.gofundme.com forward slash artifactual. Support the film, and I will see y'all on May 21st in the ATL. All right, for day one of the shooting of Artifactual and the Funk Jazz Cafe. All right, peace, y'all. This is Professor Griffin. I'm Audi 5. Jeez, for real. I'm out. Peace. The problem of the 20th century is the question of color line. Between the lighter and darker races of mankind. You have heard so much about him, but in a few minutes you're going to hear from him.
the show that addresses the complex issues today affecting the human family from the solution think approach that tackles confusing and complex issues through the hip hop lens hosted by none other than Professor Griff, the co-founding member of the legendary hip hop group Public Enemy. This show is real talk that is serious for your mind radio. That means that uh, are you um, out of your freaking mind? Join us here at Serious Mind Radio on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. every week. Or log on to www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash Serious Mind. Or you can call and listen in 347-633-9644. Serious Mind for Serious Mind. Seriously. You are listening to Professor Griff or Serious Mind Radio at www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash seriously mind. The call in number is 347-633-9644. We will be right back. We don't have any things to be ashamed of. These Negroes aren't asking for no nation. We're trying to crawl back on the plantation. A revolution is bloody. Revolution is hostile. Revolution knows no compromise. Somebody told us. 